So right now, I'll quickly introduce our speakers. We have three speakers uh, to do justice to this topic titled Variation in Caesarean Bet Amongst Asian Betting People Within the American Association of Bet Centers Parental Data Registry. I'll quickly introduce Ami. I'll go Ami first. Ami is a certified nurse midwife and a PhD candidate at Boston College here in the U.S. She has been a midwife for over a decade and has worked in a variety of settings from a birth center to a large academic teaching hospital. She's an adjunct faculty at Thomas Jefferson's University Midwifery Program and also works for the digital health company, Uvia Health. Ami is on the American Association of Birth Centers Board of Directors and is on the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Asian American and Pacific Islanders Commission. Thank you, Ami, for joining us today. Um, Anna, the second speaker, is a master's in public health student at the University of Arizona. She's a graduate intern at the American Association of Bed Centers and currently works as a microbiologist. She's a Vietnamese-American and was born and raised in Arizona. Welcome. And lastly, Dia. Dia is a current MPH candidate at the University of Arizona at the University of Arizona and completing her internship with the American Association of Birth Centers. She has focused her work primarily on minority maternal health, ranging from South Asian to indigenous mothers who have been birthed utilizing Western medicine. She has worked towards providing culturally informed support at post-PSI, an organization providing support for postpartum depression and anxiety and research on postpartum depression and help seeking behavior among mothers in India. As an incoming medical student, she aims to improve maternal care for people of color by enhancing interprofessional collaboration between midwives and uh, physicians. So at this point, I'll hand over the mic to um, Amy. Hi, so thank Amy, you so much, Amy. Thank you. Um, for that introduction. Um, so as you can see, um, we have um, our presentation here. Um, I'm so sorry, Jumi, I'm, I'm unable to advance the slides. How about now? Are you able to now? Yeah, you should yep. be able to now. Oh, Yeah, there it goes. OK, so first I'm going to talk about um, our positionality. Um, all of us will. And then we'll go and get into the backgrounds. Anna will give us um, the methods. Um, and then we'll go into the results, conclusion, and acknowledgment. Um, so in terms of my positionality, um, May is a month that um, I can celebrate all my intersection inter in, um, identities because in the United States, we celebrate Asian American and Pacific Islander Native Hawaiian um, Heritage Month. And I'm proud to say that I'm um, a child of um, immigrants from Korea. Today, we also celebrate International Day of the Midwife, and that's why we're here. And I've had the privilege of working as a certified nurse midwife um, for the past 10 years. Um, both in a birth center and hospitals in the Boston area. Um, lastly, next Wednesday, um, I celebrate the birth of my daughter um, and the first time I became a mother. Um, I'm also married with two children who are born at the Cambridge Birth Center. Um, my name is Dia and I was born in India to a single mother and raised in Canada who inspired my interest in maternal health. So currently I am residing in California. I've always been very, very passionate about maternal health among minority populations. Um, and so I'm looking forward to speaking to all of you and sharing our research today. Hi, I'm Anna. Um, so I have a broad interest in maternal and child health epidemiology and um, as well as infectious disease and epidemiology. So as um, Jimmy introduced us earlier, um, I'm part of a, the American Associations of Birth Centers intern, um, part of the internship program. And so um, I'm glad to be presenting here today. And um, going back, my positionality, I'm Vietnamese um, American and I currently reside in Arizona. Um, so uh, yeah, my parents are immigrants from Vietnam. So I was first, I'm part of the first generation born here. To get into the background, um, currently in the United States, there are about 18 million Asians and Asians American, Americans. Um, 
Though Asians are categorized often into one group, as you can tell by this table, there actually is a wide range of origin groups, um, ethnicities. Um, you can see the breakdown here. This was from, from the US Census um, um, from 2016 to 2020. Um, births amongst the Asians and Asian Americans in the United States have declined over the past several years, um, which is actually true for many um, racial and ethnicity, racial groups and ethnicities. Um, but overall, Asians account for about 7% of total births in the United States. Um, so the CDC, the Center for Disease Control um, National Vital Statistics System, um, which is a comprehensive um, national database of all births and deaths in the United States, um, they release a birth outcomes report annually. Um, this report uh, from, 20, from all the births from 2021 was published last um, of this past January. Um, and they found that there are several outcomes that actually place Asians at um, lower obstetrical risks um, compared to other racial and ethnic groups. Um, an example is um, they have the highest rates of initiation of prenatal care in the first trimester. They have the lowest rates of obesity, lowest rates of smoking. Um, and another study found that um, actually they have lower rates of um, hypertensive disorders of pregnancy. Um, one of the conditions that actually place um, Asians and Asian Americans at higher risk, um, for example, for cesarean, cesarean birth, what we're talking about today, are the higher rates of gestational diabetes. In the National Vital Statistics System report from 2021, which I mentioned earlier, 16.1% of Asians had a diagnosis of gestational diabetes, which is actually double the national average. Another finding from the National Inpatient Sample Database from 2016 to 2018 also found um, a separate disparity um, amongst Asians and other racial and ethnicity, ethnic groups, um, is that they had the highest rates of um, intraamniotic infection, which many of us know as, know as choreo, choreamnionitis, um, and also pre-labor rupture of mem membranes. Um, so we're here today to talk about cesarean birth. Um, and based on this report from 2021, um, they found that Asians have the second highest rates of cesarean birth um, in the United States. And actually I went back and um, surveyed um, several of those reports in the past five years, and it continued to stay um, sort of in the same place Asians did have, and Asian Americans had the second highest rates of cesarean birth for the past five years. Additionally, um, this report and, and other um, studies that have been done um, have found that Asians are actually the lowest utilizers of midwives. Um, and as you can see from this table as well, they actually are the lowest utilizers of community birth. Here specifically is home birth, but there's actually been other studies done looking at um, birth center births too, and they, were, they were also low utilizer, utilizers of birth center births as well. Um, and because you know this um, conference is looking at midwives and we're here to celebrate midwives, um, I'll provide a little bit of context of the midwifery workforce. The United States um, certified midwives and certified nurse midwives workforce is predominantly white. Based on the data from the American Cert uh, Midwifery Certification Board from 2021, it found that only 10.8% of midwives identified as a person of color and 1.7% of midwives identified as Asian. I'll now pa pass it on to Anna. All right, so going on to our methods for this analysis, we used data from the American Association of Birth Centers um, perinatal data registry from the years 2007 to um, 2021. We used data specifically on Asian birthing, birthing people and did a logistic um, regression analysis. And then we also categorized the data into a few categories, including low risk birthing people um, or low risk, as well as community birth eligible or people who gave birth at a hospital community. And then the last category was um, on people who had cesarean births. And this can either be primary or um, repeated cesarean births. And then um, the low risk group is defined as people who are um, who had a vertex singleton um, pregnancy that lasted longer um, than 36.6 weeks. And the other group that I mentioned earlier, the community birth eligible um, group, is a subset of the low risk group, and it's defined as people who are qualified for community birth admission based on the um, Commission for Accreditation of Birth Center Standards. And this is inclusive of people, um, of birthing people who chose hospitals in the absence of medical um, indication, or in other words, elective hospitalization. And then the community birth eligible excludes any pre-existing medical history, um, any previous pregnancy histories, prenatal complications in the 
current um, pregnancy as well as antenatal medical referrals and admission status exclusions. And then um, here in showing our, some of the significant results that we found in the analysis. Um, initially, we found the odds of cesarean births among multiparous birthing people were actually 1.6 times higher compared to people who were um, who had nulliparous pregnancies. And then additionally, birthing people within the community birth eligible group, they actually had an adjusted odds of cesarean births that was higher than people in the low risk and um, total populations. And then as you can see, the highlighted um, odds ratio here of 1.554 or 1.6 rounded among the multiparous um, birthing people was higher than that of the nulliparous birthing people in the total population. And then the other second significant result we found was that among adjusted cesarean odds, um, people in the community birth eligible, eligible group had a higher odds ratio of 1.539 compared to people who were in the total or low risk population groups. And then moving along, we also found that um, NOLA Paris birthing people in the community birth eligible group had a cesarean birth that was 1.5 times higher compared to the low risk and total populations. And then among the community birth eligible groups, people who were admitted to the hospital actually had higher adjusted odds um, of cesarean birth compared to low risk and total population samples. And so multiparous birthing people also had a higher adjusted odds of cesarean births compared to um, people who with compared to nulliparous birthing people. And then here on the tables we presented, um, we see that the adjusted odds among the Nola Paris birthing people within the community birth eligible group had higher, um, higher odds than people in the low risk and total populations of Nola Paris birthing people. And then additionally, people who were community birth eligible, um, you can see that, and they were, oh, people who were in the birth community birth eligible group and were also admitted to the hospital had higher adjusted odds of cesarean births. And then um, we also found that multiparous birthing people had a higher adjusted odds of cesarean births compared to nulliparous people. You can see that here. And next I'll pass it on to Dia. Okay. Um... <clears throat> So the research that we conducted is the first to examine Asian pregnancies and clinical birthing outcomes from the AABC perinatal data registry, which makes it a vital addition to the current literature on this population. Our results did indicate that we had higher odds of cesarean birth among nulliparous people in, and the community eligible group, um, which are comparable to current literature that we also looked at. Furthermore, it is determined that there may be healthcare disparities due to socioeconomic status from implicit bias and discrimination within the healthcare system, trauma during the birthing process, and just cultural differences among, the, among patients. So similar to our results, a secondary analysis on the perinatal data registry found that multiparous birthing people who were eligible for community center birth but then elected for hospitalization had a five times higher odds of cesarean birth than multiparis who elected to give birth at the community center. So this really indicates that a greater risk of cesarean birth in hospitals, there is a greater risk of cesarean birth in hospital settings and it needs further exploration. Furthermore, Similar to our findings, a cross-analysis of all U.S. births in 2016 found that multiparous Asian birthing people who were in spontaneous labor or induced labor, and this excluded um, repeat cesarean births, had higher rates of cesarean birth compared to white counterparts, which again further implies that there are differences in birthing outcomes between racial groups. When you take socioeconomic status into consideration, we looked at the listening to mothers in California survey, which determined that Asian and Pacific Islanding, Islander birthing people who utilize public insurance, which is known as Medi-Cal, were three times uh, as more likely to report being mistreated within the hospital system. 
This really suggests that having an intersectional identity increases the risk of minority birth um, during their labor experience and can impact health outcomes as well. So we also looked at cultural differences that can determine cesarean births being higher in certain racial groups. Um, these may be due to previous birthing experiences, and this was primarily found in a study that looked at multiparous mothers in China who were more likely to elect for cesarean birth over vaginal birth uh, due, compared to their nulliparous counterparts. This was also found in another study where elective cesarean birth was higher due to traumatic deliveries or child loss after vaginal birth among Thai women. Apart from having a traumatic experience, there might be differences in cultural or religious beliefs that do motivate Asian people to elect for cesarean birth. So for example, it was determined that Korean and Chinese beliefs indicate that an auspicious life for the baby may be based on their date of birth, which may explain higher elective cesarean births amongst this population. So in conclusion, again, this study is the first to examine and analyze birthing outcomes amongst Asian birth givers included in the AABC perinatal data registry. It indicates that there are clear perinatal outcomes and inequities experienced by Asian birthing people. And there's definitely a need for data disaggregation based on racial and ethnic groups and perinatal outcomes in the United States, as well that there is a need to evaluate the low utilization of midwifery care and community births amongst the Asian population. Lastly, it is vital to acknowledge that racial and ethnic and cultural differences can lead to healthcare disparities, which must be acknowledged when midwives or other healthcare workers provide care to Asian birthing people or people of color in general. And I will pass it back to Amy. Um, so lastly, we just like to um, give a few shout outs. Um, the first one is to the American Association um, of Birth Centers Foundation Research Grant, which was able to fund um, our research. Um, a big, big thank you and acknowledgement to Dr. Diana Jolies, who is actually on listening now. Um, she was our mentor um, and had helped to really facilitate um, our being able to do this secondary analysis. Um, an additional contributor uh, contributor to um, the research was Debbie so Soman, who is a um, PhD um, architect. Uh, she's an architect, but a PhD student. Um, but thank you very much for the presentation. Um, I don't know if we'll have questions in the chats. Okay. Dr. Sisi Rajivi said this finding with multipars is so unusual. It's not what was uh, what they found in the AABC study examining the outcomes of individuals with obesity receiving care at these birth centers, but they didn't divide by racial groups, which is what you are looking at. You are looking at um, this population. Um, the Asian Betting people. Thank you very much. So I have a question, maybe before other people can send in any question or comments. Okay. Um, what, what can be done to reduce the CS rates among, um, so we can see that there's some disparity there. Um, what can be done to reduce the CS rate among Asian and Betting people? Okay, so Dr. Um, Cecilia is saying that the sample had too few Asians to look at them separately. I know that's that's quite obvious. Thank you. Um, so what, what what can let's let's talk a little bit about that to reduce the rates among Asian betting people. Yeah, and yeah, we can go for it. Sure, um, Jimmy. Thank you. And, sure. and to um, respond to Dr. Jevett, I mean, I think um, the sample, as you know, it sounds like you know you of course know the. Um, PDR pretty well, but um, the sample is also limited, so there are limitations in our study. Um, but if you also look um, in terms of the sample and, and um, the group that we used, it was both primary and repeat um, cesarean births. Um, and there actually have been have been studies, actually, the study that Dia talked about um, that looked at the Robson categories for cesarean birth, um, um, the Valdez study, um, had found that, um, I think it was the Robson 2B category, which is um, being, I'm oh, sorry, I forget which category it was, but it was essentially looking at the one for breach, which as we know um, is um, an indication for cesarean often. Um, Asians were the highest to actually elect for a breach, um, cesarean due to breach. 
Um, in addition, I think that there's other factors um, that might play into it um, as well. So I don't know if that helps to answer or, or just respond to your question. Um, and I don't know if anyone, Anna or Dee, I don't know if you want to address Jumi's um, question or I'm, I'm happy to continue. Um, just to add on in terms of looking at how to reduce cesarean birth amongst Asian people or even um, minorities in general, I think it's really important to provide adequate knowledge and resources because when you look at immigrant populations, they may not know the consequences of cesarean birth or the long-term consequences that come with having a cesarean birth. So really as a provider, providing um, enough information so they can make uh, informed decisions, that would be really, really important. Having those conversations um, while also taking their you know, cultural perspectives into consideration would be vital. Yeah, and just to add on real quick, I think um, a big barrier is probably with language, especially with um, with Asian languages, like dialects and um, tones. And I think it's important to um, be conscientious and have that as a resource or interpreters or translators. Because I, because um, personally, I think I've witnessed it with my parents as well, where um, language is a big barrier to um, in healthcare. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. And I think the midwife comes into play in some of these ideas we have um, training. The midwife has um, a significant role to play to help the woman to understand the system, how to better access the care. And I think, yeah, thank you so much. Um, Dr. Jivit said this belief is auspicious. Um, date of birth is something she experienced in Florida with families from India and China. They practiced shocked until they found a group that would schedule a caesarean on the best day. Any hints on dealing with clients holding those beliefs? So we have a comment from Dr. Um, Jibit in the chat, um, specifically about families from India and China. I don't know what are your thoughts about this. I mean, I think it's going back to talking about um, much what Dia and Anna talked about. And again, and again, I know it's hard because, you know, as I mentioned, only, you know, a little over 1% of midwives um, in the United States are Asian, but it's finding a cultural and linguistical uh, concordant provider. And I know that, you know, we are really trying to do that within, you know, our midwifery workforce. But I think that if you look at the population of births, like 7% versus the 1%, we're clearly not even close. Um, but I think that would be the first step is really trying to promote um, students who are interested in midwifery, get the word out, um, and then really um, helping to shape those providers to be able to work with those communities, um, specific communities. Um, but it is it is difficult. I mean, I think just people from any country who come with different beliefs, and, and it's also a lot about um, I know, for example, myself in Korea, the, the cesarean um, rate is extremely high. So it's about Asians, but also Asian Americans, right? You have immigrant groups that come over that have, who think that, you know, cesarean birth is completely normal and there's nothing wrong with it. Or, I mean, again, it's not that it's not normal, but it's just that there aren't repercussions of, um, um, you know, from cesarean birth. So I think it's um, about um, finding a provider that the patient feel, feels comfortable with and then ultimately, you know, giving the evidence, which I'm sure is what we all do as providers, but, um, hopefully we can continue to to work towards increasing the number of Asian midwives um, in this country. Um, just to add on, I totally agree with what Amy said. We, a big first step that we definitely need to make is to you know get more midwives who are people of color and actually increase representation so our patients feel more included and seen and heard. So that's like a major first step. But I did want to add, um, as a person of color myself and seeing my own family experiences, there is a little bit of mistrust that comes when you look at like the Western medical system or when you have a provider that might not look like yourself. So there's definitely like, even if you don't have providers who are like you, it's really important to increase collaboration with maybe leaders of that community who have an understanding of Western medicine, but can also speak to patients on that religious or cultural aspect and have, you know, a really happy medium where you're combining best of both worlds through collaborative practice with um, cultural leaders as well as midwives or physicians um, to provide that care and informed um, evidence to those patients. So yeah.
Anna, do you have any thoughts to share before we close? So yeah, Dr. Jivit agreed to. Okay, go on, please. No, I was just gonna say, I think um, Amy and Dia really um, said that really well, without, uh, especially the collaboration part. Yeah, because I think um, like we can't do it alone, having multiple um, people from multiple disciplinaries um, coming together, like working as a team, I think will be the best um, kind of like method going forward with in terms of including um, the best practice we can for patients or people and, and being inclusive of their culture and um, like their perspective as well. Absolutely. Thank you very much, ladies. Thank you, everyone. Um, yeah, Dr. Um, Javid said, agreed that all of North America has a huge need to educate more midwives from Asia with even that cultural background. Yeah, I, that, all those um, different cultural groups need to be represented and, you know, just increase the diversity, making it more easy, comfortable for women to relate and, you know, just identify with their providers. Thank you very much.